George W. McCrowlin was an American professor and the first African American to attend the University of Oklahoma. He was born on September 16, 1887. McLaughlin held a master's degree from the University of Kansas and was a retired professor living in Oklahoma City. Before the retirement, he taught at predominantly black college Langston University. He applied and he was accepted into the University of Oklahoma in 1948. As a result, the United States Supreme Court decision in McCrowin v. Oklahoma State Regents. Christening his application, which enables African Americans to be admitted to graduate education at the University of Oklahoma on a segregated basis. In the case, McLaughlin was supported by Thurgood Marshall, A. Amos T. Hall, Roscoe Donji, and five other African American students. The university was required by law to allow McLaughlin into the school, but he was entirely segregated from other students. Later, when other African American students were admitted into the school, they went through similar conditions, such as different classrooms, libraries, cafeterias, and restrooms. On September 29, 1948, a federal court ruled that the University of Oklahoma's denial to admit McCrowin was unconstitutional. To comply with segregation laws, the president of the university, George Lynn Cross, arranged for McCrowin's classes to be held in classrooms with an anteroom. This way, McCrowin could sit away from the white students while still attending all his classes. Other special accommodations that were created to continue segregation include special seating areas at the cafeteria and sporting events and separate restroom facilities. In reiteration of these conditions, McCrowin filled a suite stating that these conditions deprived him of equality. The district court was not in agreement with his argument and denied his motion for the reason that racial segregation is a deeply rooted social policy in the state of Oklahoma. Afterwards, McCrowling brought his case up again, but this time he appealed to the U.S. Supreme Court. This would begin the timeline of McCrowling v. Oklahoma, state legions for hire education suite. In McLaughlin v. Oklahoma State Regents for Higher Education, McLaughlin argued that 14th Amendment was being violated by how they were being treated. It was not until 1950 that the Supreme Court ruled that the treatment must be equal between white and African American students. McLaughlin v. Oklahoma State Regents was an important case in history because it was one of the first cases that attempted to combat the separate but equal provision in the Plessy v. Ferguson case. McCrowing v. Oklahoma showed how the separate, the separate but equal provision can still be manipulated in a way that discriminates against individuals on the basis of race. This case played an influential role in history because its ruling led to the way to the eventual overturning of Plessy v. Ferguson. The McCrowin case showed the inequality in the separate but equal provision. The accommodations made for McCrowin required that he sit separate from other students in an aclov labeled reserved of colored. He sat alone in the cafeteria and he also had his own desk in library, which was behind a stack of newspapers, so he would not be seen by the white students. All of these discriminatory practices happened under the umbrella of separate but equal provision. In 1950, an anonymous Supreme Court ruled that McLaren had not received equal treatment as required by the Constitution, writing to the court 
Chief Justice Frederick M. Vinson wrote that McCrowin was handicapped in his pursuit of effective graduate instruction. Such restrictions impair and inhibit his ability to study, to engage in discussion and exchange views with other students, and in general, to learn his professions. Currently, there is a meeting named after George A. McClellan on the campus called the George McClellan Male Leadership Conference. The conference is mainly intended for the recruitment of first-generation college students and particularly those with minority groups. However, George W. McClellan died on September 4, 1968.